Hi, my name is Rachel Foskett, and I'm a sag after member and have been picketing alongside the writers for the last few months. And last week, I was picketing over at Disney Animation, and a group of us noticed some Disney employees walking across the quad from one building to another, and a woman hung back from the group. We both locked eyes, and she slowly held up her fist and kept it up as she walked across to the other side of the building. And so, of course, our group, <laughs> we went wild, and we cheered, and we clapped for her. And I don't really understand it, but something about it, something about watching the Disney workers show support, that means a lot. Uh, it, I feel like um, it means that we have friends on the inside, which is pretty cool. Okay, love you, Audrey. See you all on the picket line next week. Yay! Hi, everybody. I'm Audrey Moore with the Audrey Helps Actors podcast. And today we have the one, the only. Hi, I'm Lori Endler. Hi, Lori. How are you? I'm doing good. You know, I'm on strike. Other than that, life is good. Thank you so much for joining me today. I have been wanting to have you on for a long time. You are sort of my union hero. People Aww. call me and ask me questions, but I only on the rarest of occasions because I know how it is will reach out to you when something is unclear. And we're going to start the process of going through the contract. SAG has given a publicity statement that went through point by point what was asked for and then what was the response of the AMPTP. So we are going to talk through the very first one, which is minimums. Now, we're making this episode short, digestible. Hopefully, Lori and I are going to be just so entertaining so you also don't get too <laughs> bored in numbers. And we're just going to talk about what this is is what the counter was, what their response to the counter is. Hopefully you share this episode around just so everyone has some solid information. Everyone knows uh, Lori's been a sag after member since what year? 1974. Whoop, whoop, 1974. And tell everyone about your negotiating committee experience and clarify that you were not on the negotiating committee this particular go round. Okay, I'll start with that. I was Great. not on the negotiating committee this go around. I do not speak officially on behalf of sag after I speak for myself and based on my knowledge of this contract and previous contracts. I did negotiate the TV theatrical contract in 2014. I was on the team that time. At that point, the contract is over 800 pages. So just know this contract is unbelievably complex. What I have done five times is help to negotiate the commercials contract which is really simple in a mere like 285 pages. <laughs> um, that said, a lot of concepts recur in all of our contracts. And I guess we're just going to jump right into basic wages. We are. We're going to go right into what is called minimum. So this is the first thing on the post that I have pinned on my profile. Uh, okay, so minimums. What SAG after proposed was 11% general wage increase in year one, 4% in year two, and 4% in year three. So I just first of all want to clarify that. Does that mean 11% and then an additional 4% to the 11% and then an additional 4% to the 11% and 4%? Is that it, what that it is? It does. It is always right. compounded, which is a right. tricky word, meaning, yes, so you, you add it on as you go. Right. So about 20%, we'll say, over the three-year period. Without an inflation-adjusted year one wage increase, members will be working for lower real wages in 2023 than they earned in 2020 and would likely still be working for lower real wages even in 2026. So can you go ahead and just explain what all of that means to us? I can. So the, the numbers that I looked at were actually the 2020 numbers. So just before we got the raise from the 2020 negotiation mm -hmm. uh, scale, which is frankly what most of us work at. We were working right. at $1,005 uh -huh. a day in June of 2020. In June of 2023, uh, which is the last time there are numbers for the CPI, that's the Consumer mm -hmm. Price Index, mm. that was worth $1,189. So we're being underpaid. So, And right now we're making 1082 Okay. So we're $100 behind inflation for the last three years. Great. The 11% that we're asking for brings us up to 1201 which is a little raise in real money mm -hmm. over 2020. It's so explain to me raise. what real money means. What does that mean? Real money is the fact that 
20 years ago, a house that costs cost four hundred thousand dollars and that same house costs eight hundred thousand dollars. Real money is in is 20 years ago. A gallon of milk cost a dollar ninety nine and now it's three ninety nine. Things don't go up at the same rate. So housing, Mm. especially in Los Angeles and New York, has gotten more expensive faster than a Mm -hmm. gallon of milk. Mm -hmm. But if you were to pay somebody what our grandparents made um, in 1930, 1940, 1950, if you took that exact same dollar and you tried to buy a house and your grandparents, some of our grandparents could buy a house on, you know, $10,000 a year income because a house costs $15,000 in a lot of places. Those houses are a million dollars. They're five hundred thousand dollars. They're three million dollars, depending on Mm -hmm. where they work. And Mm -hmm. so, what you need to survive as a middle class actor is for your wages to keep up with the cost of stuff. Right. And I will just say, I looked up how much scale was the year I joined the union. Great. It was one hundred and seventy-two dollars and fifty cents. And one hundred and seventy-two fifty. In 1974 dollars, translated into 2023 dollars, is a thousand and seventy four dollars. Mm, Scale mm. today is a thousand and eighty two. Mm, mm. So over 49 years, I'm basically I haven't gotten a raise since mm. I was nine years old. Oh, my gosh. I love that perspective. However, I also haven't gotten a demotion for the same work over that period of time. And what the AMPTP is suggesting right now is a retraction. They are suggesting that it is totally fine for us over a three-year period to be making less. Great. So let's talk about their counter. So they countered with 5% in year one, 4% in year two, and 3.5% in year three. And what we just explained is the math that sag after proposed just gives us like a $10 raise, right? Yeah. It would give you, Lori, from the age of nine to now— a $10 a day raise, ladies and gentlemen, not day. $10 an hour, but $10 a day raise in this profession. And what they're proposing, the 5% versus the 11%, so a 6% difference, which we are calculating would mean that we would be taking a loss. That's yes. correct? So it is a $50 a day decrease in your actual ability to take that check and buy stuff. And I just want to just throw something in. I've done a little bit of research. Over the last 10 years, the cost to have cable has gone up 34%. So the companies that are paying us, cable companies, Mm -hmm. have raised their rates by a third over the last 10 years. Netflix. Netflix has raised its rates between 25 and 70% and would like to offer us a 5% daily raise. Does something seem, oh, what's the word? unreasonable. (laughs) Right. Unfair, you might say. Also unfair. Let's talk about their response. I want to go through the AMPTP's response. So they said, what SAG-AFTRA failed to mention, Colin, the producer's offer is historic by any measure. The last time the union secured a general wage increase of 5% in any year was in 1988. Based on theatrical and television earlies in calendar year 2022, the producer's current offer would generate an additional $717 million million dollars in wage increases over thir- three years. Okay, so let's just start with that. Because they're saying, listen, this is historic. This 5% is just crazy bonkers. And you're going to make 717 million in wage increases over the next three years. So what are you? what is your uh, thought or counter to that, Lori? My counter is that history is terrific, but where we live is today. Mm -hmm. And what we need today is a bigger than historic raise because inflation has been bigger than history. Mm -hmm. A giant raise just makes you slightly less underpaid. It doesn't necessarily get you back to historic. It gets you back to behind. And I don't want to be behind. Well, I would just like to speak on behalf of humanity. <laughs> I think the fact that you as a as an individual in this field, if we keep inflation in mind, that you have actually not received a raise in the 40 plus years you have been working in this industry. And I think that's unacceptable. I would argue that is 
grossly unacceptable. And definitely to be getting a salary decrease on the value that you've earned in your decades is reprehensible. This is the thing that people are talking about with regard to labor in general in this country of corporate greed, is that that is an issue. We are not the only industry affected by it. Not by a long shot. Not by and I would shot. say that earlier in my career, and, and my career has been, you know, I started in Day Player, moved on to guest star, did series work, and now I'm back to being a day player. That's just, mm-hmm. you know, I'm I'm an I'm a older middle-aged actress and there's just less stuff for me and that's mm-hmm. fine. But when I was working my way up and then even after series, I wasn't working for scale. And over the last maybe 15, 20 years, it has become pretty much a truism that almost everybody works for scale plus 10. There's not a lot of room for what we used to call quotes, which is Mm -hmm. Lori doesn't work for scale. Lori works for 1,500 a day. And while there are certainly people who who get that, and obviously celebrities make as much as they can negotiate, Mm -hmm. uh, your basic day player is told more often than not, take it or leave it. There are 40 people behind you who will work for scale. So the idea of building up a quote that says, here's the 90 things on my resume I'm Mm -hmm. happy to come in and work for one day and do four lines, but you got to pay me for my giant resume. Mm -hmm. Those days are mostly gone. That's right. And that brings to me the concept that you taught me, which is the floor versus the ceiling. So I would love to talk about minimums as the floor versus the ceiling and how it used to be that the minimum was set, a minimum, the floor, you can't pay people less than this thing that that minimum was the starting point for a negotiation based on an actor's resume, qualifications, relationships, any of those sorts of things. It used to be people negotiated on the other side in good faith with that resume and relationships and qualities in mind. Absolutely. And now that that is not true, what happened is that the floor has become the ceiling. So no one's paying above that number, which means if no one can negotiate above the minimum, then the minimum must come up. And it must come up historically, truly historically, to meet our needs in terms of being able to live in this country and make a livable wage. Absolutely. It used to be a merit system, not just for your talent, but for your experience and your resume, so that By the time I was 12, I didn't work for scale. I worked for more than scale. And when I booked a series, I was paid more than some of the other people, the the other kids on the show, because I had a longer resume. Now, when I do a co-star role, sometimes my agent can get me a little bit more, but it's a little bit more. And that's Mm because she has to really point at 50 years of resume. And I'd kind of like a better raise than that. But that's not the part of the business we're fighting right now. We're fighting the minimums because Mm -hmm. if the minimums are going to be the maximums, as you say, Mm -hmm. it has to be something I can make a living on. So, Lori, you've been hitting picket lines, and I would love to hear your thoughts in terms of the picket lines, the energy, things to keep in mind, what's working, what's not working. Tell us about it. Uh, Well, I started picketing uh, day one of the writer's strike. I was out Mm -hmm. about once a week, and I've been out about three times a week with us so far. The energy is incredible, and I guess what I'd say to be mindful of, especially if you're picketing in the Valley or in New York or any place, if they add leafleting elsewhere, please be mindful of the heat. It is so hot. It is really easy to get dehydrated and not realize it and to feel like you're part of a moment and you want to keep going, and I promise you, you need to ask yourself the question every time you pass maybe a specific place in the line. Ask yourself, how do I feel? No, really, how do I feel? And if the answer is anything less than pretty darn good, Mm -hmm. go home. Mm -hmm. I hit a little bit of uh, pushing it too far at least Mm -hmm. one day. I've seen at least two people who needed to to sit down and take electrolytes. And in both cases, they're like, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm like, no, Mm -hmm. this may, I hope not, but it may be a long haul. Right. You don't need to come out five days a week in the heat. You don't need to come out for three or four or five hours a day in the heat. If you can come out for an hour a day once a week 
over the long haul, we're going to be fine. We need to have the energy to take this, if necessary, through September, through October, Mm -hmm. through November, as Mm -hmm. long as it takes to get what we deserve. And so I just, from the bottom of my mom type heart, and I don't have kids, (laughs) but I feel like the line mom. You are. Please make sure you are taking physical care of yourself. Don't let Mm -hmm. your energy and your adrenaline and your need to be part of this moment and movement let you be unsafe for your physical health. Yes. Thank you so much for that. I've been telling people longevity and morale. This is a game about longevity and morale. So I think the adrenaline is such a great point because I think that's so much a part of it is it just feels like you're part of this exciting movement. And what I want to say is keep Keep awareness of week six. We're going into week two. I would love for everyone to keep an awareness of week six, week 12. Think of it just like those of you who have done the self-tape may challenge. Tape one through five, great. Tape 12 through 16, great. Five through 12 is kind of hard, right? Yeah. So show up and and pace yourselves and and no boundaries and if you don't trust yourself with boundaries have somebody else tell you when it's time for you to go home it is not at all unreasonable to think that los angeles picketers are going to be picketing in el nino rains right and new york picketers will be entirely possibly picketing in blizzards um, right so yes pace yourself find mm-hmm. a day you know you can do it and do it when you can and give yourself the grace to take a day off if you need mm-hmm. to. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm going to go pick it on the other side of the hill for a day because yeah. I just I, I still want to get out there. But I yeah. need a day in the 70 degree heat instead of the <laughs> yeah. 90 degree heat. Exactly. Uh, so I'm going to give myself that gift. We need to be kind to ourselves and each other and obey the traffic rules. We want the studios to be upset that we are there, mm-hmm. but only for one reason. And the reason mm-hmm. is our presence, not our behavior. Jesse, fire that one out. That one's amazing. Put that one on the gram. (laughs) Snapshot it out because that is so, this is why I go to her. This is why she's my union hero, ladies and gentlemen. All right, Lori, thank you so much for your time, for your research, for your decades of both service to the union and also incredible work in our craft and continued commitment to this art form and this profession. I love a union sister, but I love an actress sister even more. So thank you so much for all of your decades of beautiful work and for all the advocacy you do for us, both in front of and behind the camera. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And you're the most amazing cheerleader for our members and our pre-members. And it's wonderful to see and listen to. Thank you. All right, everyone, don't forget your towel out there. It's hot.